Hey, everybody, how's it going? I've got the ever amazing Scott Elliott from Chernobyl Studios in today. How's it going? Good. It's going quite well. Uh, last time I saw Scott in person probably was at Guitar Summit in Mannheim, Germany. We hung out. We had a great time hanging out with all the different uh, guitar and amp manufacturers and our buddies, you know, Chris and Cola and Lasse Lammer and all those dudes and the rough guitar guys and whatnot. Anyway, so I got on the subject of this with Scott the other day, and I thought this would be kind of a good subject because this is something that comes up consistently, not only on the show, but on my merciless mix reviews on Monday mornings and whatnot. And that is how do we dial in a guitar sound for a mix versus just making it sound good by itself? Because I hear that all the time, you know, on your mixes is like, it sounds like, wow, you dialed in the guitar sound and you tried to build the rest of the mix around it. And it's not really working too well as part of the cohesive whole. And I think, you know, we need to discuss this a little bit more about dialing in your, your tones to work more in the context of a mix. And I don't think there's a better qualified guy to talk about that subject than Scott. Wow. That's uh thank you very much for the compliment. <laughs> well, you did happen to make the definitive course on dialing in guitar sound and that is guitar tone mastery. I, I mean, it. like yeah. you've got a great methodology uh, and this is the only course I've ever taken twice just because there's so much good information in there. I updated it and it'll be updated again this year actually. So Okay, we'll cool. Be, so, we'll yeah, you're adding that. in a whole bunch of stuff. You've already added in a bunch of stuff about live amps and whatnot. Yep, and right? I, I mean, I have more stuff to talk about. Maybe that little white pedal over there might be something you see in the future. <laughs> oh, yeah, there it is. That's the white pedal. Oh, you mean one of these? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. Plus, I got Chris Jupiter pedal, the Catastrophe, which I did at 42 Gear Street, actually. Ridiculous pedal. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a little more fuzzier, but yeah, it's it's very cool pedal. All right, so let's let's just get on the subject. So I was thinking, let's talk about three points each about how to help dial your sound in for a mix. Yeah. So what's your number one tip? <laughs> number one tip is to remember that the, the 3D expansive bigness of a mix comes from your bass guitar. So... You don't have to fill in all that space with your actual guitar. So maybe when you're playing by yourself in your room, you might probably crank the bass or whatever. But when you're recording, you, you mean you mean you crank the bottom end of the yeah, guitar, yeah, signal, my not bad. the yeah. bass guitar. You cr so you're like, oh man, I want it to be like, what do you want? Thick, you know, bottom end, booty, all that stuff. When you're recording hmm. or when you're mixing a song, the bass guitar does that stuff. So right. if you were just to, so remember, I think you've said this on your merciless, merciless mix reviews before, where if you just listen to a guitar sound that's supposed to be mixed with other elements by itself, it almost sounds like shit <laughs> because it's, it's it's kind of like constricted to not constricted, but it's the melodic aspects of it are like, whoop, you're taking out the high end. You're taking out as much low end as you possibly can so that you can have the right. musical voice of the guitar down, not down the center, but in the in this central range of the frequencies because you have I, a bass I'd say guitar. What, I, I'd, I'd call that shrinking the bandwidth yeah, exactly. of the guitar signal because the guitar signal is going to going to take up almost your entire audio spectrum from 20 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. I mean, like, past about 15, there's not a lot of information going on there. But what you're talking about is, yes, decreasing the bandwidth. Sometimes you're rolling off the low end of the guitar anywhere from 60 hertz all the way up to sometimes even 120 hertz. And then yep. the top end, you're, you're taking everything from 20K down to about 12K. You might boost up the 10 kilohertz end of the spectrum, but there's that there's that whole fizziness region that you really don't need because it's just a lot of almost white noise up there. And that's better reserved for higher end things like the top end of a vocal and symbol uh, symbol brightness and, and the sizzle off there. Your guitars really don't need to be fighting for that space. So that's just basically using a little bit of high, high, high roll off and low roll off just to constrict that bandwidth of the, the overall guitar. I would consider that signal. the most important. That's why it's number one because you like just try it. Like, yep. you know, record a guitar and then just do a filter low and high up to like 100 hertz, you know, and, and just and the, the low end will literally disappear in the guitar. But the mix exactly, will pipe. and and this is the thing. I mean, like I, you can even say it like this: the guitars might even sound almost a little thin when when you're dialing them in like that. Like uh, you look at say like one of my favorite guitar sounds ever, Clayman. Uh, that almost sounds kind of thin, but then you realize there's this in bass guitar underneath the whole thing, yep. and it just sounds fucking gigantic because of it. Because the, and this the, the bass thing, guitar like, you, and the rhythm ever... guitar have to do this. Yeah, so exactly. they meld together, and then they create the the big sound that people are after. Right. And 
it's like if if you've got Guitar Hero or a rock band or something like that, go listen to the tracks there. You know, go go pull up your PlayStation and listen to some of your favorite heavy mixes, and you listen for just the guitar parts and listen to just how thin those sound. And it's like, oh, mm-hmm. see. And if you don't do that, you get the exact opposite effect, and that's like the injustice for all sound, where it's just like it's just got this massive guitar sound, and then you can't hear the bass at all. Right. Plus, and they turn it the bass way sound that down. Big. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's that too. They turn yeah, they turn the bass way because way, it's, way it's down. basic physics. Things you cannot. Two things cannot exist in the same place. So if you have a bunch of lowing in the go. guitar, what's your bass supposed to do? It's just right. going to be muffled, undefined, and then you're going to have a, you're going to send it to Glenn. Glenn's going to go, "What the fuck? Can't hear anything." <laughs> It's loud, but I can't hear anything. <laughs> and with my and with my luck, you hard printed the guitar sound, and there's no di, so I'm basically <laughs> stuck working working with that whatever shitty ass guitar sound you dialed in. Great, that's never <laughs> happened before, not even once. It certainly didn't happen last week when I was trying to mix a fucking song. Sure, yeah, oh. <laughs> but I mean, it comes down again. You can't. It comes down again to dialing it, dialing it in, understanding that other elements exist within zero to twenty k. That's all you get to work with. Now, my number one suggestion would be new strings. Uh, This is my signature set from SIT. Uh, This is the 10 to 62 set. This is my seven string set. I've also got them for sixes, bass guitar, you name it. They're fucking amazing. New strings are going to give you the baseline in which to work from. If you've got old dead strings, you know, you're wondering why, you know, you're just not getting whatever cut or expressiveness you want out of your strings. Uh, yeah, I definitely recommend dropping new ones on. Just throw them on, break them in, you know, maybe a day ahead, uh, just so they're going to retain their tuning and whatnot, and you should be good to go. But if you if you play expressively, new strings are going to make a big difference. Um, now, I learned something the hard way the other, or a couple mo- months back, where I shot out a couple different brands of strings, and uh, I didn't think they were going to make that big of a deal, but they actually did. I put up my strings, like, versus some Maxima Golds, and I was not impressed with the Maximas, especially if you're playing high-gain metal tone. Uh, you got to be real careful about what string brand you use and these are nickel plated so these are meant to be played with high gain that's what i'd recommend you know just using nickel plated even if you don't want to use my strings nickel plating is probably the way to go and once again i I just stress this over and over and over again make sure you're using new strings not only on your guitar but your bass it's the easiest way to get a great sound start with something good I was I was waiting for the bass part. Yes, <laughs> it's kind of been a kind of been a theme on this show over yeah. the last decade. And the thing is, yeah. it's like I think it's slowly starting to sink in. Oh, <laughs> new strings, good idea. So it's interesting that you would say the strings because I know recently you've been kind of going down the rabbit hole. Like, do pickups matter? Do blah 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 matter? But I guess it would make sense that a physical thing that vibrates and the material of it would matter. Well, what what's a guitar pickup? And what's an electric guitar? Basically, it's a linear electric generator. Mm-hmm. Okay, you, you, the strings moving the, through the magnetic field, that's a generator. Okay, so the strings are literally one half of that generator. Here's the insane thing. I found far more difference in guitar sound from going between nickel-plated strings and gold-plated strings than changing out, you know, pickups. Right. Uh, you know, from one type of humbucker to another, you know, actives, passives, this output, that output. No, the strings really made the gigantic difference, which just completely blew me away. I was not expecting to get that. And I love it when I'm wrong in those experiments because I wind up learning something. You know, the if I can piggyback your number one into my number two, because I think I think they're linked. So uh, this is a complete placebo effect. And actually, Hanning changed my mind about this, you know, because Hanning's got a couple of guitars in the studio that are that are what's the aged? What's it called when they make them look vintage? Relic. Yeah, yeah, that's the word. I asked him why they would do that, and Henning's like, well, if it already looks like shit, you're not really going to care, and you'll probably rock out more heavy on stage because you're not trying to keep it pristine. I was like, oh, that makes sense. But if you have new strings, your performance will probably be better. New strings, really? shiny, everything feels better because you're getting mm. the sound that you want out of the guitar, right? It's not dead. you know. Because mm. Carl Sanders uses those SIT strings, too. He's got his own set. And mm-hmm. anyone that listens to Niall knows Carl is very expressive with his with the solos, does a lot of bends and things like that. Mm-hmm. So it would make sense that if your your strings are new, you're getting the sound that you want, your performance will be better. And performance is key for a good guitar tone. Very sim- It's very simple. If you can play together intact and you're stacking the guitars, uh, obviously the tone will sound great. If you're off, uh, then you're fighting against each other. You know, it's, I wouldn't say ending out of phase. I would mean that this transient has started, and then before it opens, this transient cuts off this transient, and then you're not getting the thickness of the guitar tone that you were hoping for and the tightness of the overall mix. So right. performance, I mean, 
is is key in my opinion. And we're not giving a lot of mixing advice, but that's the actual. Uh, well, you got to start the with trade. the fundamentals. It's not about mixing. It's actually everything but that. Right, Somehow. exactly. It's like you, you got to worry about all the other shit before you even bother to start moving faders. And this is the thing. If you put your faders up and you're not happy with the guitar sound you've got, you've fucked up. Yeah. Great example. I remember, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, you know, when the, you know, before social media really took off or whatnot, I remember watching some Judas Priest studio updates. They were like working on the first like Ripper Owens record or something like that. And they put some video up. And I just remember, you know, it's like they hadn't even started mixing anything yet. And they put up the drums and the guitars. And I'm like, that sounds fucking incredible. <laughs> and yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, that's what you got to worry about. Okay. It's don't fix it in the mix. Get the fundamentals right to begin with, you know, things like performance and strings. That's going to make a big, big fucking difference. Absolutely. All right. So now I'm going to say my number two besides new, new strings, and this is so important for all you guys out there who might be scratching your heads about how to get a great guitar sound is start with the Bogren amp knob. It's like a $35 plug-in. All you got to do is turn the knob. You don't have to EQ it. You don't have to touch anything. It just works. It's mix ready. Yes, you're going to wind up sounding like everybody else. I, I get that aspect of it. But if you don't know what the fuck you're doing, learn how to sound like everybody else before, before you find your own thing. That would be my suggestion because that way you're going to get used to what a good guitar sound for sitting in a mix is. I like what you're saying about the amp knob, actually, because remember, I was doing this when the poo was just starting to come out. So this is like 15, 12, 15 years ago. 15 years ago, it's yeah. a long time. Yeah. And you had no point of reference. You had no idea. Like, not only is it right. just, you have the amp, bob, amp knob, you have to figure out, okay, what is this amp simulator thing? Uh, an IR loader, what the hell is that? Oh, I need an IR right. too. All right, sweet. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there's a distortion overdrive pedal. All right, how do I put this in order? How do I do this? And how do I set it all up? And why does it sound like shit? Because there was right. zero information back then. Like, oh, absolutely. That's nothing. that's why the Andy Sneap forum was so popular because we were all helping each other out, try and figure out how to make this work. It's like, yeah. well, you know, why don't my guitars sound like what I'm hearing on the record? What do I have to do? And there was a bunch of us. And it's like everybody who's basically you know got careers in metal these days, we're all hanging on an Andy's forum. It was like me and Joey Sturgis, A.L. Levy, Lassa Lammert, Brett from Calissa, you know, the Ailstorm guys, the Periphery guys. Everybody yeah, yeah. was on there. And we're all trying to help each other out, figure out how the hell do we dial in these guitar sounds so you're absolutely right the great thing about the amp knob is it takes all that out it's just basically here is a finished sound drop this on your mix it's going to work and it takes the guesswork out and it's a great reference point sure. once you learn that that gives you an idea this is how a guitar should sound to fit in the context of a mix great now i know what that's how that's supposed to work now i can build off that because that gives you the reference point because we never had that before all we had was you know each other trying to figure this out and then occasionally you know like somebody really you know, much more experienced like Andy or Colin Richardson would jump in once in a blue moon and say well try a little this or try a little that but they never give you their dry tracks and go hey this is what it sounds like try, try and emulate this it wasn't until we got rock band that we started hearing it, it's like these sound a little thin you know yeah. and it's like <laughs> they don't I mean. teach these, that yeah these suck why why do they suck so much but then in the accent of the mix. <laughs> and the thing that drove us all fucking crazy, and I mean really fucking crazy, is any forum other than the Andy Sneap forum you would go on to get advice about recording guitar would just be terrible fucking advice sure. because it was all geared to classic and hard rock. Nobody knew how to fucking dial in, in flames. Yeah, Nobody yeah. knew how to dial in carcass. Are you fucking joking? I got this comment today on, on my show. The heaviest I'll ever go is ACDC. It's like, I'm not interested in cream puff tones, pal. I want shit that's going to lay, lay waste to the planet. Yeah, fuck. It's, uh, I mean, just... just just, just get amp knob. And listen, the people who say like, hey, it's not like everybody ain't me. You got the people. So here's my philosophy, okay? So back when we were, back in my day, it just took longer to get to the plateau because, yeah. because the information was harder to get to. But everyone got to the plateau. And then that same plateau, uh, the people who just either work at it and just claw their way up, like you and Max Borton and all the dudes on Ultimate Metal who have careers now, they just, they broke through that. Or they just stay there. So all Amp Knob is going to do is basically going to shortcut you to the plateau. You're going to be like, right, here I am now. You and still you have to figure that. it out. You, but at least you're going to be like, this is the goal. This is, 
I can isolate this, I can listen to this, and this is what I'm working towards. You've got you've got a much better jumping off point nowadays. Right. Uh, the great thing about the amp knob is it used to be just one fixed IR. Once you figure out how to work with that and get that to work in the mix, then you can turn off the IRs and drop right. in other IRs, like my new one for 2023, which is like the best one I've ever done. <laughs> That's actually a free download. You can get that in the description below. Go grab that. That's going to help you out massively. And yes, it does, I got to say, it does sound pretty fucking good. It's actually a pair of IRs, and you can blend the mic so you're not going to sound exactly like everybody what's so bad about uh wanting to sound like people that you like in the beginning that's what that's what you'll learn that's because getting to that point is still going to take forever and you're going to learn right. a lot of skills to get there Along like the i way. love carl i love nile i love that guitar tone it took me years to be able to do that i know how to do that now that's cool but i still have my own ideas and sounds that i want to experiment with but now it's a lot more fun. Like, I got this JCM 900 and all these pedals. So Friday night, what am I doing? I line up all my pedals, and I try to figure out what works best with this. And I'm just sitting there experimenting, having fun. Friday night, when everyone else is partying and whatever, and whatever. here I am sitting with an ample night lawn until 3 o'clock in the morning. Because that's what you have to do if you really want to get good guitar tones. You have to sit with the gear, and you have to just, like, what does this do? What is that? Oh, oh. That was, and then you just move on along. And then that's how you do it. Yep. Exactly. Uh, you know, I mean, that's you, you, funny. You mentioned Carl and Niall and, you know, emulating your heroes. I mean, like back in the 80s, you know, we wanted to get Priest and Metallica tones. So that that was that. So we were looking at the gear they were using and trying to get those sounds. And, you know, why am I not getting a Priest sound out of my shitty 85 watt Gorilla amp? You know, <laughs> what the <laughs> hell? Kind of things. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, this kind of all comes back, though, about um, and, and, and to number three for me anyway. And that is start with my free impulse is go grab have that downloaded it's been dialed in do sound great uh you should need minimal dicking around maybe a bit of high and low end cut there like we were discussing earlier but that's really all you got to do you know load it up into your favorite ir loader go back and you know maybe play with the fader blend it a little brighter a little darker it's going to sound great no matter what you do and uh speaking of ir loaders uh spectre digital's got something really cool coming up i don't think we have it quite ready for a release yet but um it should be out in the next week or two and it's really going to change the game in terms of impulse response loaders i know scott's been working with it and uh what do you think so far scott uh i <laughs> I'm upset that I can't use it publicly yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've been using I've been using it on the show for like the last four months, and it's yeah. like, fuck, I can't wait to be able to show people this. Damn. Like every time I go to load it, I'm like, oh, I can't do that. Mm, okay. Yeah, I know. Alex. Sucks, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, what would be your number three tip then? It's, again, it's not not even the mixing thing. Just understand that the guitar coexists. You know, <laughs> approach tones. What? Uh, you, you, not, you mean there's more than there's more than me? <laughs> you know, uh, okay, how about this? Just but don't, but the, just, the mixes sound better when I turn everything up. At least yeah, that's, exactly. Uh, how about, how about but, this but, one? But, 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 but the mixes sound better when I turn the guitar up. At least that's yeah. what you guys have been sub who've been submitting your mixes on this show have been showing to me is that like a lot of you guys are guitar players. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you always hear that as the loudest thing in the mix. <laughs> sure. So uh, how about how about this? How about this? Like, don't dial your guitar tone in a vacuum. Yeah. What what I mean by that is like, so here's a great. Example example let's say i have a reamp client i actually just did this so they'll send me the thing i'll do the drums and bass and then i go mm. to the guitars and i'll just cycle the song with drums and bass playing and then i'll literally right. take a, an ir or an amp and i'll just try things like it's not working it's not working it's not working but i'm cracking the tone with everything else at the same time not just sitting right. here chug 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 this sounds cool oh wait there, this guy doesn't do any chugs in the song so i literally just created a guitar tone for a technique with guitar, guitar playing that the guy doesn't even fucking do. I mean, it's it's build the guitar tones in relationship to what the music is actually being played. So so don't do it in a vacuum. Just you know, play I think, guitar I think that's great advice. with drums and bass, and then see how it. You'll know when it's working or it's not working because some for some reason or another physics just works itself out. So you'll find that IR that has that bump frequency right in the hole that you need it in the mix, and you're like, oh. That's the one. That's the one I need. And you won't have to do anything. You just gave me a great idea for a follow-up video about dialing in guitar sound for a mix. I think I'm going to show that. It's like, <laughs> here's my drums and bass. Let's let's show how we actually do this instead of do that. I think I'm going to do that in a, in a dedicated video because I think that's a great idea. You know, and, and I don't know why people are so scared of doing this because when I, I'm mm -hmm. guilty of it, you know, like I used to do everything in solo back in like in the, yep. in, in the before times. Mm -hmm. And yep. that sucks. But I think that actually makes you, it takes longer for you to learn what actually works and doesn't. So to start right away with trying to build your guitar tones with all with with the with the music all playing together, because things will just jump out. 
like if you have a low if you have a uh, like a really low end heavy ir with a down tuned bass and you're sitting there going why don't i have any note definition i don't know gee whiz captain maybe find an <laughs> ir that has more mids in it you right know, not so much low end because you're sure now see you're again phys- you can't put two things in the same spot Right. Uh, this is the thing you were talking about dialing in a tone with the mix going and whatnot. I believe you've got a clip for us right now. Let's roll that. Let's see what Scott's talking about and see how well that works. Now, this all goes back into this, and Scott created what's got to be the best course ever about dialing guitar sounds in, and that's guitar tone mastery. So I figured since Scott came on the show, we're going to do a little flash sale in his honor, and what we're going to do is uh, Scott's added in all this extra content. The normal price for this course is 199 bucks, and it's totally worth it if you do nothing but play guitar and record guitar all day and that kind of thing, and you're wondering how to get better at what you do. This course definitely changed my life in terms of getting guitar sounds, and it allows me to get a really amazing mixes these days. But for the next couple of days, we're going to have a sale on till the end of Sunday night, and we're going to have this course up for only 129 bucks. So if you want to grab it, you want to get better at getting great metal sounds, you want to take the mystery out of that, grab this course because the sale's only going to last for a few days. And even if you don't want to get the course, you can at least get my free impulse response links in the video description below. So just to circle back on this, so just just some just some good advice though. And like I said, I, I love that last point the most, and I think that's kind of should really inspire people to do that, is remember, dial in your sounds with the drums and bass going, not just by themselves. I think that's wonderful advice, Scott. Thank you. I, I mean, it would have saved me a long time if someone told me to do that. Because <laughs> you do it, I mean, you do it it's, solo, it and you're like, so this obvious. sounds fucking awesome. And then you try to put it in the mix, you're like, the fuck, it doesn't... And, and and that that's the thing, and we're all guilty of doing that. It's like, okay, let's dial in the guitar tone. Okay, stop everything else. Let's go play with the amp. Whereas that should be on a loop and go, okay, let's get this really working. So I think I think that's just beautiful advice. And the simplest solutions always tend to be the correct ones, don't they? You know, you know what you said, like when you the the video about priests playing the drums and the and the and the guitar and it already sounds good. That's kind of like the gold standard. I you nail. I don't. This doesn't always happen, by the way, but I'll. I know I'll nail the tone when I open it. I do my high pass, low pass photos, and I go, all right. Yep. Uh, maybe I'll exactly. just take this little nasty little shitty thing out here on top. Otherwise, I'm done. You know, right on. That's when you know you've done pretty good. When If you're sitting there going like seven, eight EQ cuts, and then everything is just like, eh, maybe you might, yeah. might want to readjust what you wanted to do yep. with the guitar. Yeah, tone. you might want to rethink rethink, you know, what you know, if you're in the digital realm, which and, IR you're using, <laughs> or if you're in the analog realm, maybe bump that mic around a couple of millimeters here and there. And I've or done change it. out your speakers. You can, I still have videos on my channel from like five or six years ago showing exactly how to do that. Like yeah. nine, ten fucking EQ. Oh, cuts. I know. I yeah. <laughs> and it, and it's like, yeah, just just you know, or or chances are if you have to do that, uh and yeah, here's the other thing. Now, if you you find yourself having to do that, chances are you bought yourself a vintage 30 that was made sometime between 2005 and 2020. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for about 15 years, though, the uh, the Vintage 30s weren't too great, that's for sure. The new ones are fucking amazing, though. I, I got to say, Celestian really stepped up their game, finally. So so there is that. I love that. They even said, oh, oh, that's just, yeah, They, they people have been asking Tomin one, oh, that's just misinformation based on some YouTube guy. I had to do a follow-up video there and show the frequency response graphs, and I'm like, well, these ones have a 10 dB, dB peak at, like, fucking, you know, six and a half kilohertz. And it's like, that's oh, yeah. where the fizz is coming from. I and did it's see like, that, actually, the new ones don't, yeah. Yeah, the new ones don't have that. So having the right speaker uh, can be a very, very, very big factor in getting the right sound. So if you're working in the digital realm, that's why we have so many different impulse responses. Yep. All right. Anyway, we better wrap it up here. We're going to be here yeah, all fucking day. People are already day. fucking falling asleep. Like, come on. Come on. Probably. 
Anyway, Scott, it's always a pleasure having you on the show. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for pleasure, sharing man. your wonderful advice. And guys, try that out. Try dialing in your sounds with the fucking with the with the music going. Try that. See how that works out for you. And for for the further information, head on over to Spectre Digital. We'll have links for everything in the description below. Check out Guitar Tone Mastery uh, because it's a, it, it's a really incredible course. It certainly changed my life for the better as far as dialing in mixes. And it, and now I get to spend less time fucking around with guitar sounds and more time getting mixes. I'm happy with if only i had made guitar tone mastery before you started recording woods hey <laughs> <laughs> uh that, that record still would have been anyway let's not no no no, no. <laughs> hey listen i don't care i know you've shit on that guitar tone a lot but listen you can't change it now that record the nope. first one by the way i'm not talking about yeah. woods two I'm talking about okay. woods one that sounds great yeah. leave it alone it, whatever it works, think, it I, works. I, yeah, yeah. I think we use GK eighty fives on there or something like that. You know, like wow. the eighty five watt things and a two and a custom two by twelve that the guy who helped me build this studio did. So it had a very very unique sound, and that was uh, that was the dual rectifier. All right, all right. That's for another video, though. We should really talk about that one day. I know Scott's a big fan of that record. Anyway, anyway. Thanks. Hold everybody on. Wait for a minute. Watching. I got this. If you want me to come back, so make Glenn talk about fucking woods more and David Gold and the recording process. Comment below. Leave a like. Go yes, Glenn, Scott, and Woods. <laughs> Do it. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. That's it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. And if you would do me the favor, please hit the subscribe button because it really does help. I'll see you next time. Thanks again, Scott. See ya. Cheers.